it's time. It's time. Hi, hello, my name is Madison. It's nice to see you. I'm glad you could make it. If you've quite literally ever seen my face anywhere on the internet before, I feel like you already know that the Magnolia Park series took a piece of my heart and just claimed it as its own. It has been just over exactly a year since I picked up the very first Magnolia Parks book and entered my like full reading girly era. These books have been and will continue to be my Roman Empire. I feel like you guys know this, but I started creating book content and my book talk when I wanted so badly to ramble about my books with people, but like the people in my real life, they just weren't giving me what I needed them to give. Like I needed someone to converse about these made up worlds with that would get it and would feel the same way that I did. And the book Books that have shaped me as a reader the most are without a doubt the Magnolia Park series. And that one tiny little goal that I had was I really, really, really just like with a throwaway goal that I thought would never ever happen and like kind of trying to manifest came true. All of my friends in my real life know, but I really wanted to receive an arc of a Magnolia Parks book from Jessa Hastings a couple of days ago, a little while ago now. That happened. Okay, I just got an email. This is like one of my biggest small goals that felt so unachievable for so long. It was like one thing that I told everyone in my life. I just really hope that I can get this arc one day. This would be like such a crazy moment. And when I tell you I got the email, when I sobbed, there were tears. There were so many tears. I can't even put into... I'm gonna cry again. This is a pinch me moment. This is a fucking pinch me moment. I think I need to do a reread. I can't finish Magnolia and BJ stories without a fresh mind. I think I need to do a reread. I'm gonna cry. To say that I cried tears opening that email would be the understatement of the century. I actually have the memory of a teeny tiny little goldfish and I have convinced so many of you guys and people in my real life to read the series and so many times I'm talking to someone and I'll be like, what part of the book are you in? And they say something and I'm like, yeah, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I truly have the memory of a goldfish, so I feel like I will be able to go into this a year later and read it again for the first time. Obviously, the big things I really remember, and I feel like reading it, I'm gonna notice so much more the second time around. But I really want Into the Dark to hit, like, right in the core, where I know it's gonna hit me. And I feel like it'll hit the most after having reread everything and then going straight into it. I read all four of these in succession. And let me tell you, they hit, and I want this to hit because this is the very last book in Magnolia and BJ's perspective. We get more from Daisy and Christian's perspectives moving forward, but Into the Dark is the last book we get from our tried and true Magnolia and BJ. And just like how the last two left off, there's going to be tears shed. So we are going to do a full official reread of the entire series. You're going to get my full thoughts the second time around, my full reactions the second time around, and my initial reactions to reading and finishing Into the Dark. You somehow have no idea what this series is about. Part one, how'd you even find me? Because I feel like I've told the internet what this book is about 82,000 times. It is basically Gossip Girl meets London High Society. It follows Magnolia and BJ in these, the first, the third, and the new one, the fifth, and then Daisy and Christian, other friends in the friend group in the second and the fourth. And it is toxic, it's tumultuous, it's heartbreaking. It's a lot. It's like reality TV had a baby, but it's beautifully written. Without further ado, we're gonna get in to Magnolia Parks one again. This book is so beat up, the spine just like, I love a good lived in book and I love that these are gonna be even more lived in the second time around. It is 8 p.m. and shh, 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 before you say anything, I know, 
I know, it's far too late. But I just watched Sarah Crowley's Trying to Find a Five Star and she read Into the Dark in it. I need to know. And I'm reading this far too slow. I think it's because I'm savoring it, which is stupid because I've already read it and annotating it. I've annotated, I wanna say, every single page so far. I'm 78 pages in. Can you even tell? I think I've annotated legitimately every single page. So I just need, we need to speed it up. I need the energy to speed it up. The self-control it is taking me not to just go and read it right now. I've already sobbed twice. After me annotating this, no one who has not read this can ever see or touch this copy. The amount of foreshadowing, I don't think I realized the first time around why it hit me so hard. And now I'm getting it because we're getting like little hints to everything throughout. Miss Jessa, I saw you back then, but I see you now. I have put so many little like foreshadowing, this foreshadowing. If you've read the book, you know who this annotation is about. Like the amount of tabs that I have that say this. I'm dumbfounded by how much I missed the first time around, but I think that's why it hit so hard is because in a back of our mind, unless, I mean, you guys are probably smarter than me and like remember, I did not the first time around. Um, And maybe I'm just the idiot that's realizing it now. That's totally possible. Regardless, loving the reread. The littlest tiny things make me sob in books because I'm like, if you were real people, I would sob. People cry during movies. It's not that weird. It's hitting a lot harder the second time around. My mom is also currently reading Mingley Park. She gets why I'm loving it so much, but she's like about halfway. And I told her that I cried twice and she was like, oh, for what? I don't think I cried about these things the first time around, but just <laughs> with everything you know about them now, oh. I got a DM from one of you one day saying that when you read Magnolia Parks, when you were picturing Daisy Hates, you pictured me. And after reading the original description of Daisy, like it already was the best compliment that I've ever gotten. Double fold now, the best compliment that I have ever received. The like little sprinkles that we are getting of Daisy and Christian in here. I'm eating them up, I'm eating them the fuck up, okay? I think that I am of the unpopular opinion. I know that most people ride much harder for Magnolia and BJ. I think I ride for them equally. Like I love Daisy and Christian story a lot and seeing what transpires in Daisy Hates and like everything that goes wrong essentially is Magnolia on the pages here but like from a different perspective like you aren't supposed to know yet all of the tea that transpires but having known all the tea I honestly doing the reread knowing everything that I know my heart is shattering because you know the conversation that they had going in to meeting Magnolia at this breakfast place my heart is shattering also if somehow you didn't know the way the Magnolia Parks books work is Magnolia Parks is like this year and then the first Daisy Hates is that same year but from Daisy and Christian's perspective, so like overlapping events. And then The Long Way Home is this year and The Great Undoing is the same year, but from a different perspective, which like I've never seen in books before. It's so good, it's so cool. And it just makes the whole box set, this whole group of friends, like you're so in it with them. I feel like I feel more for Daisy and Christian now having gone back and knowing everything, like seeing it now, you understand why Daisy responds the way she does. In this, you're like, I hate her. And then you don't hate her. just passed halfway through Magnolia Parks. I feel like I'm at like 64% if I had to get. And it's taken me so long. Like I've realistically read on and off like eight hours. I usually could read a book of this length and more in that amount of time, but just the annotating this, like the amount of times that I've read a quote in this and been like, I could annotate it. And then I read another sentence or two and I'm like, I'm gonna annotate it. That was kind of the whole point of this was like to really write down and delve into everything that I loved about this story. Because I mean, like I know what happens. Is it hitting as 
hard the second time. Yeah, it is. It really is. I do see this time around, it's a little bit repetitive. It is because like they're toxic and they make poor decisions and it's like them constantly making the same decision. But knowing what I know now, I feel like I appreciate it more because every single thing matters. Halfway through, the amount of details, she's telling us what is gonna happen all the way up to the fourth book in this one, I feel like. Like there's so many little, little things. I noticed the first time, but I really, I did not appreciate them for what they are. I see the storyline as having way more substance the second time around. I would still definitely describe it as like a character driven plot, but I see more plot this time around. I'm sobbing reading this, which is like, it's not supposed to be this sad, but just like with all of the knowledge that we, it's hitting me right in my core. It's gonna take me a hot minute to get through all of these because like, this is just the beginning. I am crying this much and it is taking me this long to read because I'm annotating this much in the first one. We're in it for the long haul. Am I happy to be doing the reread? Yes, this is the most fun that I've had reading. I feel like in such a long time, if it were any other book, I would be getting kind of bored at this point and putting it down and like going to do something else for a little bit. And in those moments, I like check in with myself and I'm like, do you want to put the book down? And it's like, no, I don't really want to. And I know what happens, so that's crazy. I mean, I'm in it with them. I'm in this world with them. going to continue to be spoiler free but I just have to read this don't love how that just fell off of the wall all by itself I can't not talk to my Magnolia for at least for a here second so if you have not read it skip ahead a little bit skip to here please do it it really will ruin it skip it warning ah uh, how did I not figure this out before and from what I can tell none of us figured it out that it was Polly that BJ cheated on Magnolia with this whole page I can't I cannot believe it basically Perry and Polly are talking to Park and saying like what is she doing here about Tara Park says he promised it wasn't her Polly presses her lips together do you think maybe he's lying though and then I turn around BJ what the fuck was that now Polly uh she stutters what did you say I lean in towards her scowling say it again what did you say she swallows nervous nothing I shake my head I've never lied to her okay she nods fuck you I point at Polly angry Beach Park says touching my arm it's okay she's just being Fuck her. Fuck you. It's not like Sax is innocent here. Quiet, Polly tells to Perry. No, we can't talk to you like that, Perry tells me. Can't I? I blink, squaring my shoulder. This hits so much harder knowing how this ends. Okay, that's my little spiel. I think that if you've read this series, you should reread it. I'm noticing so much the second time around. And this is only the first one! Oh my god. <laughs> Officially on the last chapter. If you know, you know. <laughs> got me the second time around. Go off, Jessa Hastings. You got me again. I definitely forgot how hard this was gonna hit me. I've recouped myself a little bit now. I think my heart just lives in London with the box set. I have lots of opinions. I feel like upon the reread, part one, this is a prized possession now. Like all of these annotations all the way throughout prized possession also one to be kept under lock and key because no one reading the series for the first time can ever look at this copy the amount of foreshadowing and just like little nuanced things that i noticed throughout that like matter later on in the series it was so much fun to reread part one part two so many dumb things were emotional i also feel like i have a greater understanding of everything on this cover in so many ways yes it 100 percent a lot harder that's not english it 100% I'm emotionally unwell you cannot judge me right now I feel more for the series than I did before which is shocking because it was my Roman Empire to the point that I think I've recommended it 100 bajillion times like I think this is truly the series that you guys have read because of me and like I stand on that recommendation even more now like this is such a realistic but heartbreaking modern romance it's so sad and like we shouldn't be dealing with toxicity like this and this is on like a glorified large scale 
real but like they're real emotions and like real reactions and i think that's why it hits so hard i feel like i know at least one person who has gone through every single thing in this book and in this series it feels real but it gives me the same like roller coaster of emotion the same feelings that reading something as high stakes as a fantasy gives me i don't even like it's not romance like it's literally modern fiction but it is a romance because it's about a romance but it's not romantic but it is i also really want to just go into the long way home right now obviously i'm not gonna do that you miss so much if you skip daisy hates i've heard a couple of people saying that they want to do that don't do that it's time to go in to daisy hates it's like 1 30 in the morning right now so i don't think it'll be right now this is like one of those books that you put down and you're like i don't want to put it down i want to pick it back up and i want to just like read the last little bit at least again like i don't want it to be done if you were wondering it's a five star obviously you knew that <laughs> DJ playlist continually plays Taylor Swift and I bought my ticket yesterday. So many feels. I'm only like five chapters into Daisy, which is page 32, like not very far. Part one, Julian, we missed you, baby. I miss Julian. I'm really noticing this time around how well we understand the characters as people. And I think that's why they feel like real people in my head. I just read how Julian explains how Daisy doesn't really get into female relationships because she didn't have a mother figure because her mom kind of sucked even when she was around. This is what I mean when I say that these are like really modern literary romances because I feel like in a typical romance you get like a little bit of backstory but you get the backstory on the thing that's going to be an inciting force you know what I mean like you get the backstory and the trauma and the feeling of what is going to be said problem in said relationship with this you get such well-rounded versions of the characters a from their own perspectives and then b from the people that know them best us learning about Daisy through Julian us learning about Julian through Daisy us learning about Magnolia through BJ us learning about BJ through Magnolia it's just like you get such well-rounded versions of the characters which is why I think her book hits so hard like why these characters feel so real to all of us I've always had like a bit of a soft spot for Daisy like I feel like I see some of myself and just seeing these characters like be introduced again when I like already know them so well like I really didn't think the reread would be this emotional and they're real people because there's so much story to them it feels like a real group of friends I will say I hate the end notes that come with reading Daisy like I don't want every other sentence to have like a footnote at the bottom of the page it is without a doubt the most annoying part about reading a Daisy's perspective but I get why it is the way it is it's just another thing it's like a literary device that Jessie uses that's like she's the smart one and she's always wanted this normal fucking life if you're wondering how it's going it's going emotional but like you knew that you've watched me cry for the last 10 minutes clearly grazed over this description of Tiller the first time around because he's described as the blonde guy from Fast and Furious and I was picturing him as like this guy from Criminal Minds. Park, I'm definitely noticing a lot more depth this time around than I did the first time around. Like with Magnolia and BJ, I noticed a lot of foreshadowing. This time I'm noticing like a lot more depth. Like I'm, I'm making more connections to the characters. And I was already, dare I say, a Daisy, Christian, and Julian girly like i love magnolia bj's story through and through love them with every part of my being i feel like i almost like daisy and christian's story more i feel like i like the crime bossiness of their story i do really find that i'm noticing this time around romeo is daisy's bj like the unbreakable tether the invisible string between them like there's no ties that can be broken between them but they are like the more healthy adjusted realistic version of the same couple i'm actually finding this time around in this 
Facebook for the most part I'm mad at Christian and like I love the stuff that Romeo says to Daisy obviously these books are toxic they're fucked up we would never accept this shit in real life we get that I stand with you don't worry but like the shit that Romeo says to Daisy I love and I love watching their relationship like kind of knowing everything now the love triangle ish that is going on Romeo being her like childhood lover and also like knowing what happens that they all foreshadow like they all say like they're not ready to talk about yet knowing what happens and then rereading the beginning it's just hitting so much harder the chapter where Julian talks about what happened on the beach when they were kids I sobbed the first time around I wasn't like connected to them obviously yet because it was so early on and it was like building the plot but now that I'm like so connected sob I'm loving it this has definitely been less emotional for me than Magnolia there's something about Daisy's side of the story that is like so much more pragmatic and like realistic it's less like heart-wrenching and sad it's more like that's how it is which like is kind of refreshing after the emotional roller coaster that is Magnolia and VJ our annotations in terms of Daisy are filling up pretty quickly it's looking beautiful I'm so excited to like display my books this way on the bookshelf from now on like with all of them annotated these hold such a special place in my heart if you're a Magnolia girly which I know so many of you are you get the love that I have for them and like how melancholic this week is making me <laughs> pages left in daisy hates i love it i think i'm a daisy and christian girl like i love magnolia and bj i think i love them equally but like in completely different ways i'm also remembering how hateable magnolia is in this i know that you kind of hate christian reading it in magnolia and bj's perspective also like magnolia kind of sucks but also you read a magnolia's perspective you know why she's the way that she is you know that the hurt and the trauma where everything is coming from also justified this is what i mean the characters are well-rounded like they make mistakes but you're rooting for them because they're like real people the instances that drove them there would drive a lot of people there and it makes sense Daisy and Christian my babies my absolute club scene where Daisy throws the fit and walks out on Christian like my heart shattering the moment he realizes there's trauma bonds and there's love and like we're watching them go through that I don't know it's hitting extra hard I don't think I've read other books where it's like the same year different perspectives and we just get so much of like how the entire friend group operates there's so many siblings in the friend group and like why Jonah is so loyal to BJ you don't Really understand in the first one like you think that they're just friends but like it goes so much deeper these characters are real <laughs> goddamn humans to me and i'm getting ready to cry <laughs> together is making my little heart so happy good god there is something about the books in daisy's perspective that is just even more full circle i feel like with magnolia and bj it is so much about their love such romantic die hard invisible string love versus with why am i crying again babe their fictional characters rein it in i feel like with daisy you get so many different types of love the real shining star in this book upon the reread the quotes between daisy and julian the sibling love that they have that they
they were kind of forced to have Julian as like a teenager himself had to pick up and raise Daisy and basically be her father like it really could have gone one of two ways like they could have hated each other they love each other in a familial way that is like inexplicable it's Daisy's okay or nothing's okay the first time around I really feel like I didn't get any of Julian being like a real human until the great undoing but there was so much in this upon the reread that just like he was a guy who his parents died really young and he had to take over this crime empire and yeah sure he was predisposed and he wanted the power but he doesn't want to be the worst guy ever but now he's in this situation where the empire is the empire and they're losing each other in it and like Christian and Daisy and Christian getting over himself and like realizing that love doesn't have to be painful there's something about their story that just like hits me in my core Magnolia and BJ feels like watching a train wreck that like you're still rooting for this feels like watching a real girl and a real guy go through life in a way that probably most of us will never understand being a part of what they refer to as the underworld and just like desperately wanting a normal life and wanting to feel normal things and do things normally and not being allowed to do that therefore everything is bigger the hurt is bigger the love is bigger whether it's between her and julian or her and christian or her and romeo this one hit on the reread even harder than magnolia hit because i feel like i know what i get with magnolia and bj there's just so much love and hate in this book and like the character arcs in this are bigger christian's character arc in this is bigger it's a book babe calm down the reason why December 3rd is so important and like what the tree means and this playing okay I have something groundbreaking to say I you're not gonna expect it but I am noticing so much the second time around editing me is gonna actually crucify me for how many times that I have said this okay I'm noticing something very specifically different or like with new eyes the second time around in each book like one very specific thing like in Daisy Hates I really really noticed that it was like a bigger love like we got so much of Daisy and Julian that's the part that hit me the hardest the second time around what is hitting me the hardest in this i'm understanding more now how this is everybody's favorite book of the four that are already out like i think most people i know that love this series this is their favorite the great undoing did something to me we'll see what i think upon the reread i think the thing that is making this hit so hard part one finally discovering what december 3rd is and like what the dartmouth house and the tree on the cover of the original magnolia park like she had this bitch planned out tell me how the first Magnolia Park's cover is like the prime source of sadness in this one. There are real problems that like real people have. Like the big issue, what is December 3rd? What makes December 3rd so important is something that like people go through, young people go through. I've had friends that have gone through it. I've seen it like do what it did to Magnolia and BJ to people in my life. I'm gonna cry. Like they're not real people. You're getting so much of Magnolia and BJ falling in love. Like I feel like in the first one you got a lot of them when they're young, like falling in love at 11. This you're getting like them in high school when like they're together and it's like relatable, like they're grown up. It's like relatable love. Like you can imagine the couple that was infatuated with each other in high school, like that's who they were. But you're getting like the intricacies of it, how much the love just like grew from there i think getting them as high school sweethearts for lack of a better word and like seeing the same stories in each of their perspectives bj saying how he felt in the moments and how magnolia felt in the moments before they could read each other like a book so it's their internal monologue about the things i'll wear it like a badge of honor forever that he loved me first that he loved me at all have you ever had a love like that
is officially done and added to the list of the finished and annotated copies. I cannot get over how beautiful these all look together. I'm so glad that I did this. Finished the long way home last night at like 3.30 in the morning, I want to say. The last like 150 pages. There was just no world that I could put it down. And tell me why I literally didn't remember most of the twists that happened in this. Like the big thing, the three big things that happened in the end. I remembered that they happened. I did not remember the order in which they happened. Like I forgot how much of a roller coaster the last bit of this was gonna be. Obviously love Julian. I feel like after reading The Great Undoing and going back to this, you see so many little things that he did. We love, we love Julian. We got so much more of like Magnolia and BJ growing up and like falling in love in this. Like less so of it like damaging each other for no reason. BJ's character arc in this, we love. We love a man that goes to therapy. We love a man that is trying to do the right thing. Not that they always make the right decisions because I told you this is Magnolia Parks. They make toxic decisions. We're learning, we're coping. They're real humans. They make real mistakes. I feel like I never really clocked in on why this was called The Long Way Home, but my God, did he take The Long Way Home. Without a doubt, this is probably the one that the first time I read it kind of like went over my head the most. I will say there were parts of this one that I felt like were kind of slow, which might be the fact that I've read it and like I know what happens and like they are repetitive, you know? But it's not repetitive in the sense of like, why are we doing the same thing over and over again? It's I get why you're doing the same thing over and over again. We're making the same mistake. This one probably hurt the most. No, I don't think it did. I mean, it did. The ending, it did. It did hurt the most, but the entire reading experience, these ones hurt more upon the reread, I think because I knew how much was going to happen. Love her. Love her. I still have a feeling that The Great Undoing is going to be my favorite of the four. Look what just showed up. I can't believe it's here. Oh my god. The self-control it is taking me to not just pick this up right now. You don't even understand. It's on my Kindle up there and now it's right here. It's right here. <gasps> because I need to make this note. Very quick spoiler warning. You can skip ahead to this time. I think it's literally gonna be like 14 seconds. Could have just said 15, three. Two, one. Tell me why, and I thought this the first time around, okay? In the first Daisy Hates, I was always like, who the fuck are those conversations with when it's like a blank number? And then in The Long Way Home, I was like, oh, maybe it's Magnolia and Julian because Magnolia texts a random number and it was Julian. It was, and I never feel like I got clarification on that and I was confused. But then in Daisy Hates, I was like, maybe it's just him talking to that girl from the art museum, you know, that girl, I don't know her name. Page 57 of The Great Undoing, okay? And to clarify, I'm not hung up on her. I think of her sometimes, that's all. Text her when I think of her, which isn't often, but just sometimes. And it's every time that something went wrong. Did anyone else not make this connection the first time around? Over the mantelpiece, she hung her own portrait of herself, that little manx. Best painting I've ever seen, too. Better than any woman has ever painted in the history of time. A face I'd win battles for, a face I'd lose anything for. Even her. This is the first tab I ever put in a book, ever. And not only is the book sad, but I'm feeling emotional. It'll never not be crazy that I picked these books up one day, fell in love with reading, and then now you're here watching this. And it all seriously started with this one little tab. I 
I mean like if we are so goddamn for real, I'm a Daisy and Christian girly. I am a Daisy and Christian girly. This confirmed that for me. This is still without a doubt my favorite of the four. This is also like a very emotional reading experience for me. I mean, I kind of told you, but this is quite literally the little pink tab, the one that's out of place. The first tab that I ever put in a book ever and is like kind of what sent me on the journey that I'm on now, which is like more than I ever could have asked for. I feel for these characters like they are real goddamn humans. There is something about Daisy and Christian and Julian's perspective altogether. There's just so much life to it there's so much like reality and grief like they're obviously laid up and big dramatic situations and big dramatic lots of things going wrong but they're not like unbelievable and i think that's why they like hit so goddamn hard i read this in one day because i just like i could not put it down seeing what happens in the long way home from julian's perspective the ending of this like literally having to sedate him. I also really realized while reading this how incredible it is that basically Jessa tells the same story twice. Like it's the same year, different perspectives over and over again. And it never gets boring. Like it feels like you're in on the joke a little bit. Like when you get to conversations that Magnolia or BJ are in, it's from the other person's perspective. You're getting these like deep emotional conversations about honestly most of the time extremely fucked up, sad, things but you got magnolia's thoughts the first time around and now you're getting daisy julie and christian's thoughts on the same things it's just like it's so impactful is the only way to put it this one is without a doubt still my absolute favorite i did go into into the dark this morning i've actually been reading it on my kindle honestly because i just i need to know what happens and like as much as i'm an annotating girly till the day i die i'm putting them in here and then transferring them into here which actually there's no page numbers on these it's not making that transfer process easy i'm exactly like 100 pages in i'm 98 pages in miss Hastings. This is torture. Torture. I was sitting in my bed over there this morning. I started reading it the second I woke up because like what else is new? I need to know what happens. This is like what this whole week was for was getting to this point. If you think I was sleeping even a moment or doing anything but reading this, you're wrong. Utter torture. I ugly cried like like something really was happening to me. My roommate literally came in my room and checked on me because like that was the kinds of sobs. I'm getting asked a lot in DMs how many boxes of tissue people are gonna need and like infinite both magnolia and bj's perspectives sh heart shattering shattering painful it is dealing so heavily with like grief and loss the disorders and problems that those people already have at from past traumas and just like how they're manifesting now in the face of like real real trauma it's quite a hard sad read it's beautiful like what else is new she writes things that deserve to be put on a marble wall i don't know how else to put it yeah 100 pages in quite quite painful i mean i'm loving it obviously i also like i love to feel things i love to stop while crying so i'm enjoying myself i can't believe that she's doing this to us i mean it's beautiful and it's impactful but my god it's not it has not been like a happy-go-lucky fun reading experience i don't know how to say anything without saying anything because i don't want to spoil anything freak out don't freak out okay don't freak out whole brand new bitch brand new bitch by the time this is out you've definitely seen it already the plan was that this whole video would be done before the red i digress i know this is like a jump scare in the middle of this video it's a drastic change i know i'm seeing myself in the mirror okay i'm seeing myself in the mirror <laughs> into the dark i am on chapter 18 page 167 of i think it's 700 and something which don't get me wrong the fact that this is the last one give me more make it 2,000 pages i don't care at all it does feel longer it feels heavier in the hand i have been mostly reading on kindle and annotating on kindle which is stupid 
because there is no page numbers in the uncorrected proof. And also there is none of the fashion-y stuff. Like, you know how in Magnolia she's like, I'm wearing Saint Laurent this and Amari this and blah, blah, blah. It's all just XXX fashion. Like it hadn't been decided what she would be wearing yet, which like does take some of Magnolia's spunk out of it. My God, is this sad. It is sad. It's torturously painful. I saw Jess made a post recently saying like, why is it called Into the Dark? And she was like, it's because they go into the dark. Like all these things that you kind of know and have been like festering in the characters for a while it's coming out and like they're they're processing really really intense grief and it's coming out in like really intense dark scary but realistic ways a true exploration of the human experience it's beautiful Jess has done an amazing job so far i'm crying at like quite literally every single corner picture me in my hair appointment five hours ago reading on my little kindle and looking around because i was tearing up in goddamn public do you know how sad a book has to be for me to tear up in pu not that sad i'm a big crier i'm a big crier it's like everything that i would have ever asked so far of a wrap up of Magnolia and BJ's story. I know that there's I think two more coming out in Daisy's story, which I am a Daisy and Christian girly till the day I die. Magnolia's story and BJ's story, it's so big, it's so emotional and traumatic. The trauma that these two well-to-do kids have had to go through and like, don't get me wrong, a lot of it's from really poor decision making, but like that's from trauma. It's so, it's yeah if you haven't gotten your hands on this yet if you are watching this before it has come out gear up get ready don't read this on the subway read this at home in your bed where you have the room to cry okay the only reason that i have gotten this far through it and been fine is because i have my emotional support son here with me and every single time that i cry while i'm reading he comes up and he looks my face because he's like i don't want you to cry it's like a good mix of happy and sad tears like it's it's a good story it happened how it was supposed to happen like a lot has happened the way it was supposed to happen but it also is like just while well, life is unfucking fair <laughs> breaking down in tears once a chapter at <laughs> least everything that has led up to this makes this make a lot of sense like every single thing that is going wrong I understand how we got there like you know how in the beginning of the book it's like why did BJ cheat on her we don't know we don't know everything that is happening in this it's just like repeat patterns repeat offenses things that we've seen shadowed and foreshadowed in previous book either through the characters perspectives or through someone else's perspectives of them they're just like traits and things that are happening that are like yeah if those things happened in the previous books this is what would happen and you just wish that those things didn't have to happen to these fictional characters that are real humans to me. I'm enjoying reading it, but it's a hard read, but it's beautiful. I don't know. I just, I honestly feel really lucky that I was able to read it before it came out because this series means a lot to me if you guys cannot tell from all of this and all the rambling that I do about these books on the internet. And I like that I get to like just read it for me. Like it feels like no one else's opinions matter. Like how I feel about it is how I feel about it. I would be utterly shocked if this didn't end up being a six, seven star read for me. I'm eating up every single word it's painful it's really painful everything that happens is supposed to happen though but not like a in it's meant to be kind of way in like a yeah that's what would happen and like i'm sorry that you had to go through that and also hearing that jessa mirrors so much of herself in magnolia i just want to give her a hug too this video may have you believing. I don't love to sob 
on camera. And to say that this book had me sobbing at every turn would be quite the understatement. So I did, for the most part, like just take the time for myself. I don't want to spoil anything for you guys. Like I don't want you to see where in the book brought me tears because I think for different people, so many different parts of this book is going to get you. It is such a crazy, beautiful exploration of the human experience. I feel like this is going to go down as like one of the best books, one of the best series in our generation. It is toxic. It is of the times. It is painful, but it's also like so at its core, the raw human experience. That feels dramatic, but it also feels very fitting. If you're wondering, yeah, it's a six star read for me. I think I'm going to reread it like very, very soon because this whole rereading experience was so much fun. It's the most fun I've had reading in the longest time ever. I'm sad to be leaving this story. What I feel like I can say without saying anything is that this is a beautiful ending to Magnolia BJ's story. It's real. It's sad. It's happy. It was an emotional roller coaster. I was laughing, giggling, and crying happy tears, and then the next page sobbing. It is so impactful is the only way that I know how to put it. I couldn't have asked Jessa for anything more. Like if I knew starting Magnolia Parks a year ago that I would like be this attached to fictional people and like so attached to this world and these characters. Truly a piece of my heart lives in Holland Park, lives in London with the box set. I'm really excited to see where the next books go in the other perspective. It's a, it's amazing. Like get, get ready. It's the Magnolia and BJ that you love and if you hate them, I think you'll love them by the end. And just like that, that, that was a month of my life almost of rereading my favorite series and then reading arguably my new favorite book in the entire world. Is this series still my Roman Empire? No if ands or buts about it. If you haven't read the series yet and you're still on the fence, it's such a beautiful modern literary romance. Like it's realistic. They're real people but like in such larger than life situations with larger than life money and larger than life problems but really realistic normal problems that we all kind of have. I have no words for this series. Series. I have absolutely no words for this book. This is like some of the most fun I've ever had filming and I'm really glad that I did this. It took a lot out of me, a lot of late nights, but it was worth it because this did hit so much harder than I think it would have if I was like a little bit removed from the series. Let me know if you guys have read these, if you are excited for Into the Dark, if you have started Into the Dark by the time you're watching this, let me know what you think. And thanks for spending a hot minute with me going through my real raw emotions together. Love you. Bye. If you're wondering how many tissue boxes you're gonna need, the answer is still infinite. <laughs>